opposed to to lobbyists or lobby activities, not in the, as much as the council, uh, the commission, or the parliament is. But I'm sure that we shall have a good cooperation, and after the negotiations, we shall be able to have this declaration, political declaration, in place. And final word tonight on this subject, Senor Cassini, our reporter. I'd just like to add a few points. I too would like to emphasize the fact that this agreement was concluded well before the incidents involving British journalists. Unfortunately, this is a way of using the information channels. The big Italian newspapers are making fun of Europe today. They say that we're only doing this now, and that's absolutely wrong. This is what is being said in the Corriere della Sera. The agreement had already been reached well before, and this discussion has been held up a little because once we heard about the scandal, we wondered whether we could try to add to the text even more, but the text already existed. That's the first point. And then the second concerns the question of whether this is compulsory. Registration is already compulsory. You have to enter in a register. I don't understand what you mean by compulsory. You cannot try to say that all companies, all citizens, everybody has to be registered. That's not possible. If anything, it's a task for the individual MPs to see to it that if somebody wants to exert pressure, to ask them to go and register and then speak to them afterwards. The third observation is that the possible future amendments, there is a working party and I believe that we should leave considerable space to that working party. I agree that it would be appropriate to comment on progress made in the course of work. I don't know whether the rapporteur should do that or the president, but let's leave some freedom to the working party to make their own suggestions. And a final point, I really would like to thank the commissioner who made a considerable contribution to the achievement of this agreement and the representatives of the Hungarian government for the assurances they gave us that council will join in later on and council certainly is the second chamber so we need to extend the register to the second chamber to council which means that we are more uh, emphasizing the idea of having a government a legislative body in charge of Europe the, but I realize that there is this specific difficulty because the Council of Ministers represents the states, but I'm sure that we'll arrive at a positive conclusion. Thank you. Grazie, Senor Cassini. So colleagues, the joint debate on Cassini reports is closed and we will vote on it tomorrow afternoon at 12.30. Our next item on our agenda is the oral question. Nuclear safety 25 years after the Chernobyl disaster. And I give the floor to Mr. Sonic, who is our reporter. If we can wait for half a minute before Commissioner Ettinger will take his seat. And herzlich willkommen, Herr Commissar. Děkujem panu podpredsedovi Ševčovičovi. So we can, we can start. President, thank you very much. It is with satisfaction that I uh, greet uh, Parliament's commemoration of the casualties of the uh, disaster in Chernobyl this anniversary in uh, uh, connection with the recent uh, Japanese disaster is uh, an opportunity for a certain uh, review back then in the Ukraine. The Ukrainian authorities tried to hide uh, the sheer scale of the disaster. The explosion of the Chernobyl uh, reactor led to the contamination of some 10,000 square kilometers of which 70% uh, in Belarus. Uh, 
radioactive substances reached as far as Scandinavia, Central Europe, Poland, uh, also Italy and Greece. From the areas uh, located in the vicinity of the reactor, uh, some 115,000 people were evacuated. After 1986, uh, 220,000 people were uh, moved uh, from Belarus, uh, Russian Federation, Ukraine. It is uh, difficult to assess the scale of uh, damage to the environment. It is still not, impo uh, not possible to ascertain the number of casualties. The number of uh, casualties who died from cancer uh, resulting from uh, the explosion can reach as much as 9,000 people. Other sources indicate uh, that some 200,000 people have died already from the consequences of uh, the contamination. According to the most uh, recent data, uh, residents of uh, at least two Ukrainian regions uh, still eat uh, contaminated food. The EU uh, was the biggest uh, donor in terms of uh, finance aimed at combating the consequences of the Chernobyl disaster. The EU European Commission now has promised uh, 110 million euro for stabilization and uh, uh, protection of the Chernobyl power plant. In this context, we must not forget that the issue of nuclear safety is transterritorial. Uh, therefore, it should be uh, it, uh, it should be analysed from the point of view of uh, solidarity. Therefore, we have to ask the Commission: Is the Commission ready to support a long-term? Uh, review and research into general uh, consequences of the Chernobyl disaster. Does the Commission have uh, up-to-date information about uh, the contamination? Will the Commission urge the uh, Member State governments to promise a new finance to combat the consequences of the disaster? Taking into account uh, the number of nuclear power plants in the EU and the current level of coordination, what possible consequences of a major power plant fault uh, to the neighbouring population are known to the Commission? Does the Commission have plans for coordination of uh, civil protection in case of a disaster? Nuclear disasters are always a surprise. Therefore, it would be good to have a set of answers in advance that would that would allow us to minimize the consequences of any other potential disaster. Thank you. Dziękuję bardzo, pan Soni. Basardi komisji on su de frage de kernzich. The Commission now on the whole issue of nuclear safety. Mr. Oettinger, Commissioner Oettinger, you have the floor. President, ladies and gentlemen, honourable members. Over the past 25 years since the Chernobyl incident, then the Commission has obviously done, uh, looked at the efforts made to try and mitigate uh, the effects of the incident and participated in these as well. But if you take a look at the uh, scope of the incident and the uh, effects, then obviously people had to uh, come together. There were partners. Uh, from the European Union, G7, Ukraine, they all cooperated together and uh, in order to ensure that the site uh, was uh, uh, stabilized and that something could be done to protect the surrounding environment and the e European Union was very active in order to mobilize funds so that the um, outstanding work uh, could be uh, done around uh, Chernobyl and we're also making our own contribution. The Commission is the major donor uh, to the Chernobyl Fund, the Chernobyl community, and there was the recent donor conference in Kiev, and we also, uh, which uh, managed to bring together 550 million 
uh, euro, and from our budget, we have uh, allocated 110 million uh, euro to the fund. And we've managed to see that 32 countries together um, have actually managed to commit to putting funds in, uh, monies into this fund. Obviously, we're going to continue with our activities and see whether we can get other funds from the uh, Eurobank for reconstruction uh, so that we can guarantee those necessary funds that are needed uh, for the project, uh, which runs until 2015. We're also working together with the government in Ukraine because there is this plan to uh, construct a new uh, shield over the uh, Chernobyl plant. As I said, the idea is to encapsulate the reactor 4, uh, to put a new con a shield over this uh, particular re reactor. And then, of course, uh, we have to m make sure that the other reactors can be properly decommissioned, and all this work is due to have been finalized by 2015. And then, of course, there's a research project within the uh, context of the Euro Atom Framework uh, program on the consequences of the incident and how to deal with these. And there is a, a, a broad initiative. We're looking at planning as well. And there is the European uh, platform, uh, which is known as uh, Melody. And obviously, we're also thinking in uh, terms of implementing a project which would uh, take a look at those people who have been most affected by the incident uh, surrounding uh, Chernobyl, looking at uh, health, and uh, also having uh, more detailed research, thorough research on uh, food. And once we have the results, and if we were to see that the uh, if once we've seen the results and the values, if necessary, then obviously the Commission will intervene uh, in order to uh, do everything possible to coordinate efforts uh, when it comes to guaranteeing safety. There, uh, there was a high level of environmental pollution, and that has to be dealt with, and uh, we made contributions to the joint research programs uh, together with uh, various other partners in order to uh, gather the right kind of data and to develop strategies for crisis management in the nuclear field and also to uh, take a look at the areas that were affected in Belarus, Ukraine and Russia and support activities there. Because of course there was the uh, release of radioactive cesium uh, in uh, Europe and we've collected data about that. And this was done in 1998 together with Belarus, Ukraine and Russia and the results of all that work were published in the form of an atlas. And we also are supporting, uh, within the context of the Seventh Framework Program, um, a, a radiology uh, network of excellence so that we can network together uh, the various uh, centers and uh, scientific centers which look at uh, radiological protection of uh, people in the environment. When it comes to civil protection, then for the past nine years now, we've been funding cooperation between the member states and organizing civil protection exercises. And uh, a third country nationals take place and organizations that participate in this as well. And we have our various instruments for civil protection, provide uh, part funding for uh, this as well. There was a, a talk. This is a, was a simulation with many deaths, Cremex, uh, where there was uh, mass contamination um, caused by a dirty bomb and Simisac uh, which uh, simulated uh, a nuclear uh, incident triggered by an earthquake and next year we're going to do everything possible uh, to make sure that on the basis of European solid solidarity we can mitigate uh, damage in uh, the area of Chernobyl. Thank you very much. Now, the Redner and the Politician Group and Common Support. Thank you, Mr. Herr Ertinger. Now we'll take the political groups. Mr. Royal, first of all. President, Commissioner, colleagues, I'm very grateful to the Commission for having depicted the situation so thoroughly. the way in which Europe, following this disaster, did everything it could 
immediately, urgently, but also on the medium and long term until today. And I think that regardless of one's view of the problem, that's one thing. We can say that without the EU, these measures could not have been adopted and limited damage to this extent. I think it very helpful that it has been mentioned that the Commission did not only carry out, provide direct aid, but in addition to that, dealt intensively with the question of the consequences which should be drawn in terms of civil protection measures and exchange of information systems and research and studies. And I'm not sure whether it is absolutely necessary to come up with new studies or whether it is rather more necessary to have a good look at what we already have and decide whether that's enough. Is this what we need? Sometimes there is an, a huge quantity of studies, but it doesn't necessarily help you to make progress. So I'm very grateful, and I think that the Commission and Europe can be very happy with what has been done. You've proved that you don't only say things, but you also take practical action. Thank you, Mr. Royal. Mr. Leinen. Commissar Commissioner Oettinger, dear colleagues, I'd like to start off by thanking Mr. Sonic for having triggered this debate because, and for having prepared the oral question. Uh, he's quite right. We should not forget the Chernobyl incident uh, because we know that only a quarter of a century after that particular disaster, then there are still long-term effects because there's still a very large area where people can no longer live they can't go back to their homes and there is this long-term health uh, consequence as well uh, because uh, in, the, uh, in the television uh, we were able to see a lot of uh, um, uh, defective births but women are still having um, uh, these kind of problems 25 years on. Nuclear safety um, is not an issue of uh, national sovereignty, uh, it's uh, an issue of European responsibility if you take a look at our very densely populated continent, then every nuclear plant has uh, uh, effects and impact on, on the neighboring countries. And you are particularly responsible for these issues, uh, Commissioner Ottinger, because in the light of the experiences of Fukushima, it's going to be up to you to uh, take another look at this. We're going to be talking at the stress, about the stress tests with you, um, uh, taking a look at the analyses of the 130 nuclear plants and you have to be really tough because we want to have the most stringent security safety standards in Europe and we don't only want to be able to react to national, uh, uh, natural disasters, uh, there are other things, that uh, terrorist attacks, uh, uh, air crashes, uh, cyber hacking, all these kind of things, these uh, various uh, combinations of possibilities of attacking nuclear plants have to be looked at as well and uh, we have to make sure that we take this seriously. In Chernobyl, obviously a lot has to be done. The uh, sarcophagus, the covering is not 100% um, safe. I don't know, I haven't heard where the uh, radioactive waste is being uh, taken. Uh, there's no guarantee of what happens, uh, how this is dip disposed of. And uh, as Mr. Roller said, research studies are important because we I have so little experience uh, when it comes to the long-term effects of radioactive damage. So I would very much encourage the Commission to continue this work. Obviously, we have to cooperate with all those countries who have uh, nuclear power plants. And uh, I think, obviously, we have to try and look at other ways of getting electricity or, um, or making, uh, being more uh, efficient, energy efficient, for example. Thank you. Blaue Karte gets right. Is this Blaue Karte? Mr. Rubik showed a blue card. Is it your blue card? You have the floor if Mr. Leinen will accept the question. Mr. Rubik, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Thank you to Mr. Leinen. Mr. Leinen referred to stress tests. My question is regarding the impact assessment of stress tests. Do you think it would be possible to have a European regulator 
in this area to keep a permanent eye on these things and who would have a right to take uh, action. Uh, thank, you, Herr thank you very much, colleague, for that question. I think that should be the objective. That is that we have European responsibility to supervise nuclear power plants. If this has effects beyond the national borders, then this is a European dimension where we need European responsibility. And Commissioner Ertinger, that doesn't yet exist. But I think you need to work on it so that we get this basis so that Europe independently and objectively can supervise the nuclear power plants and if there are weaknesses it can draw conclusions. If the stress test shows that a plant is not secure then it should be shut down or dismantled. Thank you. Now for Liberals and Democrats. Thank you Chairman, Mr Commissioner, dear colleagues. While the question of pursuing our energy strategy with or without nuclear is now debated in concerned member states, we should keep in mind that whichever decision will be taken, nuclear safety will remain a long-standing issue for several generations. We should obviously develop and enforce common standards on nuclear safety at international level, since radioactive contamination does not know borders, as the Chernobyl disaster revealed and as confirmed by what is still happening in Fukushima. Twenty-five years after events in Chernobyl, we still need further assessment and research on past and current impacts of contamination of human health and the environment. We have to think about nuclear safety not as a protection measure, but as a long-term and encompassing strategy. We should also address the issue of nuclear waste. What has remained now from Chernobyl is a waste and is a serious and issue in the region, and it's also becoming a European challenge for the future of nuclear energy. We need more research in this field and we need to guarantee long-term safety for storage or disposal of these materials. Whichever decision we take now, reversibility and retrievability are therefore required and I would welcome a clear position from the Commission on this matter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Parvanova. Pan, pan Szymański za Grupu Konserwatywców i Reformistów. Dziękuję bardzo. E, 20... Thank you very much. 25 years after the disaster, Chernobyl is still a frame of a reference for all of us here in Europe. It is uh, also uh, useful, but sometimes uh, uh, senseless. Now, namely, we have good legal instruments in order to make sure that uh, our rules are abided by. Therefore, I think it is uh, oversimplification and uh, simply abuse to use Chernobyl in order to attack the European uh, nuclear energy sector. Uh, doing so means that we are still dependent on imports of energy from abroad. Along our eastern border, a number of uh, uh, Russian-built nuclear power plants are to be uh, built outside of any uh, European safety uh, norms. Therefore, I think it would be uh, useful to make sure that our standards are abided by in Europe, but also in the Kaliningrad uh, region and Belarus. Now, the question is, uh, will uh, the European Commission be strong enough and have imagination enough to act in this area? Thank you. Timansky. Frau Harms für die Grünen, bitte. Mrs. Harms for the Greens. President. Thank you, President, and thank you, Mr. Ottinger. I think it is only right that the European Union, Union has already done quite a lot uh, in Chernobyl, around Chernobyl, but the question is whether we've done enough and whether it's possible to do enough and whether we're actually doing the right thing. I'm of the opinion that when it comes to the health consequences of the fallout that there are still one or two black holes to be filled. There's this whole dispute of the uh, mass massaged figures that have been provided by the International Atomic Agency, uh, uh, Energy Agency, and I think the European Union, uh, we ha the, the territory, um, actually represents about half of the area impact uh, that was affected by the fallout. and. I think the European Union has uh, a specific interest in um, doing something here. And if you take a look at the 
uh, international effects and consequences borne by the international community are not limited only to the uh, former territory of the Soviet Union, to the territory of uh, Belarus and the other countries, but over half of the fallout after the fire, after the explosion, um, well, fell on uh, the rest of the territory of uh, Europe. So I think we are going to have to take a look at these new values. Uh, uh, very many of the former uh, assistants of the uh, world uh, of the agency would, I think, would be happy if uh, this work were to be done. And if you take a look at the work that has to be done on the site itself, we're talking about this new shelter, this new cover. And why, to date, uh, have we not carried out any kind of Im um, risk assessment impact analysis for the uh, first um, shield, the first cover? This is a very large scale project. And how can you actually monitor what's going on properly in transparency if there's no risk analysis carried out? And why does nobody say anything about the fact that the um, fuel rods from reactor two and reactor three um, well, what's actually happening to them? And I think that's quite a serious problem as well. Since the Chernobyl disaster, then in the European Union, uh, we have uh, seen that there have been almost uh, accidents. Uh, Fort Poch, these are uh, various examples of Brunsbüttel or the Brunsbüttel nuclear plant in Germany as well. And all of these incidents happened before Fukushima. And if you take a look at the proposed stress tests, they're not sufficient to assess the risk that continues to exist in the current European nuclear plants. And I would very much urge you, uh, Mr. Uh, Commi uh, Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Ertinger, don't um, try and sort of brush us off with something that's fake, because if you take a look at uh, what's on the table at the, in front of us at the moment, you can't be taken seriously. Um. Thank you, Mrs. Vils. On behalf of the going, thank you. Following the nuclear, the catastrophe in Chernobyl, 25 years ago, there have been there has been new research, and 1.4 million people have di have died from the long-term consequences of radiation. Even in Germany. Our children are afraid of radiation because of rain from radioactive clouds. And now, following what happened in Chernobyl and Fukushima, we have to learn the right lessons. The fear that the stress tests announced will only be a pretext for the nuclear power plants to keep working, unfortunately, have proved true because of the criteria adopted. Other nuclear power plants won't be examined in any case, whether it's um, a question of human emission or plane accidents. Although it is essential for the health of the population, so we are calling for more comprehensive, more binding stress tests carried out by independent experts. That can, however, only be the first step to a European-wide scenario for leaving nuclear altogether. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. the explosion at Chernobyl was a disaster, but let's keep it in perspective. 64 people were killed by Chernobyl radiation over 23 years, and it caused an unknown proportion of 6,000 cases of thyroid cancer. Tragic figures, but they pale into insignificance compared to the death toll on our roads. Yet while no one is using road traffic accidents to campaign to ban the motor car, a small army of leftists is using Chernobyl to push for an end to nuclear power. I don't doubt they mean well, but the road to hell is paved with good intentions. The same people meant well when they helped create the biofuels rush, pricing the, pushing the price of food beyond the reach of the world's poor. Tonight, millions of children will go to bed slowly dying of hunger because people on that side of the house meant well. That's what the fuzzy ideals of the utopian left do in the real world. The impact of a nuclear ban would be even worse because the alternative to nuclear power isn't wind farms and solar panels. In our energy scarce post-peak oil world, the alternative to reactors is mass starvation. Thank you. Thank you. Madame Morkunaita Mikuliene. 
Thank you, President. Among other reasons, the Chernobyl disaster was caused by mistakes in the project and failures in the stress test of the reactor. The current disaster in Japan makes us carry stress tests on the nuclear power plants, and I'm sure the results will be satisfactory. But uh, damage on the environment and human health does not stop at the borders, and the lessons has been learned by the whole of Europe 25 years ago. Therefore, stress tests need to be carried out not only, within, not only on the nuclear power plants in the European Union. Now we see two new power plants being built in Kaliningrad region and Belarus. There are no stress tests being carried out. There is not even environmental impact assessments that have been carried out and the damage compensation schemes are not clear. Yet the Belarusian nuclear power plant is going to be built on the site which saw the magnitude 7 earthquake. earthquake. So all you member states need to be need to act in solid solidarity to make sure that the, strain, the same stress tests are being carried on uh, other nuclear power plants as, uh, as well as those in the European Union. With the help of international organizations, the IAEA and ESPO Convention Secretariat, we need to require clear answers to the questions on the selection of the uh, building site so that we don't have to evacuate thousands of people from this site. Mr. Balchitis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, dear member of the Commission. The discussion is greatly important, although it is much overdue. The Chernobyl disaster has great effects not only on the population of Ukraine, but also on the neighboring regions and countries, and the consequences will be felt also by the future generations. Unfortunately, the disaster of Fukushima has shown that in 25 years, the world has not made efforts uh, to objectively evaluate the nuclear risks. Uh, we were told that the nuclear power is uh, the best, it is the cleanest and the safest. However, its consequences are very bad. It will have effect on the future generations and the consequences cannot be even estimated. So therefore, we need to review in essence the nuclear issue. I welcome the uh, uh, start of the stress test in nuclear power plants in Europe. However, this program has to be systematic and ongoing and not just random. We should learn from our experience uh, the following. No single institution, no single sector can ensure uh, self-regularity, uh, self-monitoring and other uh, relevant steps. We need to formulate the comprehensive nuclear power uh, program. We need to have a comprehensive EU strategy with regard to the third countries and we need to implement monitoring at the external EU border and we need to know which steps we will take in case nuclear power plants do not uh, correspond to stress tests. Thank you. Next speaker is Madam Ek. Tack, Herr Talman. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Well, there are people who are um, very active uh, around uh, the issue of uh, um, Chernobyl. And of course, uh, there are many people who are affected on site, uh, but uh, there are people who are affected outside. Now, it's 25 years after the disaster, and we can see that in Sweden, there are still some uh, effects uh, that we can um, uh, notice uh, and uh, we can see that uh, there is a contamination of children. This is a big problem among the Sami population. We need to, to make sure that um, European reactors are thoroughly tests, uh, not just uh, to um, check something off on a list. Safety is of utmost importance and uh, we see that um, the UN doesn't want to reveal all of uh, the UK doesn't uh, want to reveal all the um, uh, information, nor does France, and I think that is uh, a big uh, concern. So we need to make sure that uh, there is a culture of safety, and that should be an important part of the stress test in the future. President, thank you. 
25 years after the Chernobyl disaster, we are now more and more aware of the consequences to human health and uh, our environment uh, of the disaster. This is especially important now after the recent disaster at Fukushima. What we know now is that the cause of the uh, Chernobyl disaster was uh, a faulty construction of the reactor. Now, are we doing anything in order to ascertain that such reactors are safe in Europe? In Europe, we have over 190 reactors. Therefore, I support the idea of uh, stress tests in Europe. However, such stress will not be mandatory and there will be no consequences uh, uh, from abstaining uh, to, uh, from running such tests. Uh, we no doubt need high standards for our nuclear power plants so that we regain the trust of our citizens. On the other hand, of course, we need to further develop other sources of energy, for instance, uh, gas from um, shale deposits, uh, for instance, in Poland. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, President. Uh, Commissioner, colleagues, uh, first of all, I would like uh, to welcome uh, Mr. Sonic's initiative uh, for um, the oral question on the uh, Chernobyl incidents uh, 25 years after. This is one of the most serious uh, civil nuclear accidents and we should draw the lessons uh, from the uh, successive uh, disasters. Now I have four points. Uh, first of all, we should guarantee to our citizens uh, the maximum security and safety. In the European Union should have the best standards in the world and should have an influence on international bodies uh, so that we have a global governance. Uh, in the world and we should make sure that we have the, the best uh, rules for safety and also for um, science. Uh, we need to have a ban on low-cost uh, reactors. Uh, the European Union and the member states and the operators in the nuclear sector should have an, a code of ethics uh, that would allow for total transparency in uh, nuclear activities. Uh, there are, of course, scientific uh, risks, uh, but if we can't uh, measure them, we can only work uh, within a contact of a code of ethics. Uh, that's the only way to deal with that concern. All of the costs of uh, safety should be included in the price of uh, energy, and uh, we need to, to have legislation to make uh, own capital. Um, part of the cost as well and uh, we should accelerate uh, scientific research in the area and I'm very pleased about uh, the uh, seventh framework program for Europe uh, Atom in 2012 and 2013. Madam Sarbu, it's our next speaker. Thank you, President. I come from Romania, a country that produces nuclear energy and where people, of course, have fears and questions that have not been answered concerning the long-term impact of the Chernobyl tragedy. This discussion we are having with the European Commission is welcome and is quite important, and I believe it is our obligation to be concerned first and foremost with the issue of measuring the impact of nuclear disasters on human health. A group of experts financed by the European Commission recommended that an international study be drafted in order to elucidate all the effects uh, on human health that have been caused by the Chernobyl catastrophe. Normally speaking, the World Health Organization would be the best suited candidate to draw this uh, study. In reality, however, there is a conflict between the World Health Organization and the International Agency for uh, Atomic Energy and the interests of the nuclear industry seem to prevail over the uh, interests of human health. An agreement signed over 50 years ago between these two organizations provided that the agency had the right to stop the World Health Organization from having access to information considered confidential, even if such information could have been vital in order to understand the effects of nuclear accidents on human health. In other words, an organization that is concerned with the promotion of nuclear technology denies the World Health Organization access to information concerning the effects of those techn these technologies on health. Thank you very much.
President, thank you. We are now uh, celebrating uh, the 25th uh, anniversary of the Chernobyl disaster. I remember that day when the communist regime in Poland tried to uh, sweep uh, the uh, disaster under the carpet. Nobody uh, cared about the health of the uh, citizens when uh, they were made uh, to participate in uh, uh, first of May parades uh, in the communist Poland. Now the area of the disaster has still not been secured uh, therefore community assistance is necessary but there is no running away from uh, nuclear energy because nuclear energy is uh, uh, a potential source of uh there is no running away from nuclear energy nuclear energy is a great tool for building uh, energy independence of Europe, uh, th which is why a new power plants are going to be built in Poland, Lithuania or Slovakia. Therefore, I am supporting uh, stress tests uh, who should be mandatory and cyclical. We have to support international cooperation in the area of uh, nuclear energy security. Therefore, similar stress tests should be carried out in Ukraine and Russian Federation. Thank you. Elmar Brock is on to next turn. Elmar Brock is the next speaker. President, Commissioner. Chernobyl showed, as did Fukushima, that despite all the rules that we set down, there is a risk and there are human failings. And from that point of view, we clearly need to say where the limits of nuclear energy lie, but even with the best rules in the world, there can be human failings. And a second lesson we have to draw from this was the lack of information provided by the former Soviet Union system. A lot of misinformation, lack of information, lack of data has to do with the socialist system. And I think that we have to say that the Soviet central model has to assume responsibility for that. And we can only have this sort of energy if there is the necessary openness. And the third point is we have to realize that many people, people from my constituency, have pr provided help to moderate the consequences. They've invited children and that kind of thing and you have to look at the consequences of the following on the following generation and we can only deal with this sort of risk in a very limited way and finally commissioner i'd like to support what you said about the stress tests european criteria need to be available which are not just drawn up according to the whims of the national states. The stress test must be a prerequisite for people not being able to say something about things which haven't been properly examined. So I would like to encourage you not to go along with the rhetoric of ministers in the Council of Ministers, but to concentrate on clear factual objective standards so that these stress tests provide the necessary evidence. Running terribly late. Um, Mr. Carrings, one and a half minutes. Thank you, President, Commissioner. If you live on a very loud street or road, you also have the possibility to move house or move further away even if it's only a couple of um, blocks away. But in the case of the Chernobyl disaster, uh, so that was 25 years ago, and now the Fukushima incident only a few weeks ago, both of these two cases are there to serve as a reminder uh, that there is not the same possibility of just being able to move away in the, when uh, you have these kind of nuclear ac uh, incidents. Uh, nuclear energy and uh, safety and security is not a local issue, it's a, a matter uh, which is far broader in scope. Russia and Belarus 
are those two countries, uh, two of the countries on the borders of the European Union, and the standards there are not as high as those that we have in the European Union. In, within the European Union, obviously, we cannot continue, uh, well, we wouldn't be able to move away from our neighbours, uh, as it were. And I think we have to make sure uh, that we have the same standards that are being applied in our neighbouring countries and right across the world. And so I'd very much urge you, Commissioner, not only to have the te stress tests carried out in the European Union, it's absolutely essential that they be carried out uh, here, but I think it's important to try and make sure that the stress tests and the standards also apply to our neighbouring countries uh, right uh, through the world. And I th think the European Union then would have an opportunity uh, to be able to bring some influence to bear on the neighbouring countries in the field of nuclear energy. Thank you. Mr. Mann, one and a half minutes. Thomas Mann, where's Thomas Mann? An me. 1986 und den Supergau eines veralteten Atom. Because of concern for dangerous radiation, which we. Uh, had for weeks we went out as little as possible and on the 11th of March this year the Fukushima nuclear power plant uh, had the accident and even in highly technological Japan the necessary level of safety couldn't be observed. Responsible politicians have to take some distance from quick solutions. We have to have stress tests we can really rely on and um, can also deal with terrorist attacks and human failings. My country has been accused of being too fearful, but we have to take citizens' fear seriously. We've got to look at all the different scenarios. We've got to put all of them on the table, including the moratorium, without any polemics or ideology. The work of the German Ethics Committee could set an example at European level, and workers in the nuclear power plants need special protection. We have to think about the ways in which they have to work and include everybody who comes into contact with radioactive waste. And we have to have rigorous tests carried out. So finally, President, we cannot make compromises on questions of safety. That's true of the EU and also our neighbouring countries. And we've got to get them on side and make joint decisions with them. On the catch the eye, I can only take one speaker from each group. I'm sorry about this. So the first person to put in for catch the eye, Mr. Mikulasic, Mrs. Herzog, Mr. Teurer, Mrs. Hassi, um, Mr. Ransdorf, Mr. Pasca, and Mrs. Wertmann. I'm sorry about this. This is what? I'm Mr. Kolaska. I'm sorry. It's not on my list. I do apologise. I've got the wrong list. No, I'm sorry. I have got the right list. Mrs. Kolaska. I didn't call you. I apologize. I'm everywhere. I'm so Look sorry. at this. Let's get on with it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Panie Przewodniczący. President, Commissioner, we are today remembering the casualties of the Chernobyl disaster. At the same time, uh, our uh, thoughts uh, go to the casualties of the Fukushima disaster. This is what we are now talking about. It seems that uh, uh, as of late we have uh, uh, more and more concerns in Europe uh, as regards nuclear energy. Also in my country, in Poland, support for construction of new power plants has uh, fallen by 10 to 15 percent, which is why it is very important uh, that all the criteria uh, announced in Budapest be uh, met in Europe Commissioner you should not yield to uh, the uh, will of those member states who want a more lenient stress test. Therefore, I think that no 
half-hearted uh, solutions can be allowed uh, in case of uh, human error and other mistakes. Those criteria should be especially important for those countries who are already uh, only now developing their nuclear programs. We talked about our neighbours who have nuclear power programs. I think such questions should be included in a, a Commission's uh, communique on the external aspect of nuclear energy. This is um, energy, uh, similarly as, as gas and other energy carriers. Nuclear energy should be covered by European policy. We should strive to Europeanize our energy policy. Thank you. Thank you very much. I repeat, uh, my apologies. Um, so, the under catch the eye first, Mr. Mikolasic, one minute. Vážený pán predseda, všetci si dobre pamätáme ešte, keď pred 20... Thank you very much. We can very well recall uh, what happened 25 years ago when the disaster happened in Chernobyl. A hundred thousand people, hundreds of thousand people have died and there are still very many people who are suffering the consequences of the radiation uh, damage uh, today. Uh, for example, different illnesses such as cancer. And I'm very happy that the European Parliament is discussing the issue of uh, nuclear safety today because this is absolutely key and of key importance. And unfortunately, at the same time, we can't do without nuclear energy, as is the case in the United States, uh, China or India, because we can see that there are a lot of projects there to build new uh, nuclear power plants. And in Europe, some of the ideas uh, that we hear about uh, building nuclear power plants and uh, closing uh, these down, bringing these to a halt, I think a little exaggerated, but we have to make sure, of course, that they are safe and secure. There are the stress tests which are to be carried out, but it's important that the stress tests also uh, be carried out in our neighboring countries, such as Belarus and Ukraine, so that we in the European Union can feel safe as well. Thank you. And, uh, Mr. Commissioner, colleagues, I'd like to speak about one issue only. Twenty, Twenty-five years after Chernobyl, there is a need to rebuild the sarcophagi. And we see that how difficult it is to gather the financial resources and how difficult it is to get the financial resources from those European member states who are on the other side are very much worrying on the nuclear safety. So we have to make sure, colleagues, that the long-term commitment is there as long as the long-term risk of the nuclear facility is there, namely in Chernobyl. And I'd like to mention it that the public commitment is not has not to be only verbal, but has to be financial and has to be a human resource to provide the skills are necessary for the long term as long Chernobyl is not solved. We do not see it at this stage because it was extremely collect European member states' financial resources to help this facility. And I think as long as we do not understand it, we remain more, mostly at the lip service. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Toira. One minute. Mr. Teurer. Uh, vielen Dank, Herr Präsident, Herr Thank you, President, Commissioner, colleagues. Chernobyl is still a concern to us 25 years later, and Fukushima will keep us busy for a long time. And the difficulties of these major incidents show that nuclear technology is still beset with considerable risks, which may be out of control. We've got to change the way we think about the energy policy, but it also shows that national approaches are not enough alone. We need an international strategy, or at least an EU-wide strategy regarding safety and security, and that's why I fully support the Energy Commissioner, who has made important proposals along those lines, and I would like to ask everybody to arrive at common principles so that the existing reactors are really safe, the, there can be no accidents or incidents and we take better care about the risks which exist and we should go on the offensive at international level. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Hasse, one minute. Colleagues, uh, 
It's been 25 years since the Chernobyl disaster, but nonetheless, uh, we don't have a, a thorough research of the um, health consequences thereof. Uh, there are only uncoordinated uh, research, uh, for example, on uh, thyroid cancer incidents uh, raising in um, Ukraine and Belarus. Uh, this lack of uh, thorough uh, examination is uh, really uh, shameful, and I think that uh, the Commission should uh, um, make sure that we do get a thorough international um, study on this. Uh, there are many people who say that only um, dozens uh, have uh, been affected, but actually, if you look at some figures, uh, that runs up to the millions. Uh, and this is the reason, and this is because uh, we don't really have uh, comprehensive research in this area. We need to know about the radioactive effects of this. Thank you, President. I think that with this 25-year anniversary of the Chernobyl disaster, we have to thank two countries that are not much favored by the European Parliament. For one, it is Belarus, which was affected just like the Ukraine. And these two countries, patiently, without uh, big gestures, finance the uh, elimination of the consequences without much attention being paid to it by, uh, EU, by the EU. And we should also thank Cuba, because Cuba admitted a large number of especially children from the affected areas and from the families that were victims of the disaster. They were provided with um, health care and with other assistance at the time where Cuba was economically very badly off. One minute. Thank you, President, Commission, dear colleagues. The consequences of uh, Chernobyl in the uh, direct uh, surroundings of the plant are known to us, but I think the Commission obviously knows uh, what about what the consequences are. Uh, Ah, but does they know what the impact is going to be? And what about the uh, health uh, financial uh, impact? What kind of measures are going to be taken in the case of a, a similar incident happening in order to protect the European population? Uh, there are some experiences. There's ISA 1. Uh, which, uh, this is a nuclear plant which, a plant which is like the uh, Fukushima plant and is uh, near an airport, or Krishko, which is in a, an area which is hit by earthquakes. Thank you. And Finally, Mr. Kelly, you were not registered to speak, but since you say you were the first to ask for the floor under Catch the Eye, I take your word for it, you've got half a minute, okay? Half a minute? Go to Margaret. Therefore, I will say two things. One, the victims of Chernobyl are not thankfully forgotten. In my own country, a great lady by the name of Eddie Roach and her organization have given tremendous support and will do so long into the future because the effects of Chernobyl will be there. Secondly, the role of the Commission, as highlighted by the Commissioner, is praiseworthy. And thirdly, the point made by Paul Rubik that a EU regulator should oversee the stress tests and any future power plants that are built would be very sensible. Colonel Ultron. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Pasca, you have the floor. Thank you for the floor, Mr. President, Mr. Commissioner. The Chernobyl catastrophe has shown the Chernobyl disaster showed how important it is to have communication and information. The Soviet system kept things secret and this made it very difficult for the neighboring countries to deal with the consequences. And for the future it's very important to think about this. As we saw in Fukushima, information was watered down. Not everything was made available. And from the point of view of protection, in the case of a nuclear disaster, it is essential for information to be made available to experts and to the public as quickly as possible and as precisely as possible. 
if we think about human failings, then we'll need to introduce new technology. President, my name is CFS. President, ladies and gentlemen, as far as Chernobyl is concerned, I'm quite happy to admit and agree that the suggestions that you've made, everything to do with research, uh, obviously, will be taking a look at these ideas and obviously try and uh, incorporate these into the next steps. And we're also going to be doing everything possible to have full funding of the necessary technical measures, uh, amongst the member states, and obviously in cooperation with the European Union, and trying to achieve this uh, kind of funding. And I'd like to thank you more generally for a very constructive debate. And uh, a lot of the questions focused on post Fukushima as well. And uh, we've already had a, a discussion with the coordinators of the um, responsible committee of the European Parliament uh, before this. Now, for example, the, with the stress tests, uh, this is all new, this is virgin territory. And to date, there has never been any kind of test procedure at the European level for nuclear power plants. And I think this is already quite uh, considerable and uh, is obviously going to uh, set the path. Secondly, if you take a look at the Lisbon Treaty, then uh, obviously one has to note that the decision on the energy mix uh, has been and continues to be a decision uh, taken by the member states, aye, those member states uh, that you come from, uh, that you represent. And that is why the decision on gas or coal or nuclear energy or renewable uh, energies, uh, this is uh, a, a specific competence of the uh, member states and it's only with the 20% renewable energy target that for the first time we have had some kind of European procedure um, where in the past it's always been the member states who've decided on their own. There are 14 member states at the moment that have nuclear energy and 13 that don't have nuclear energy. If you take a look at Poland, uh, this is a, a very European uh, member state, a European country, and they're taking a decision, about to take a decision on the building of two nuclear pan, uh, power plants. And uh, for the time being in Italy, the whole debate has been put on ice. Um, there's a proposal to have a European regulator. A regulator. Uh, but then give me the powers for this and uh, provide me with some posts that I can fill. But... Um, I have to respect the laws that exist and for the time being there is no European nuclear energy supervisory body. Uh, you won't find this in the Lisbon Treaty or the Euratom, uh, Euratom Treaty or in our own establishment plan and uh, you know this as well as I do. I do feel that the stress tests are important. This is a task that has been uh, commissioned of us by the European Council and the idea is to guarantee uh, or to take uh, the highest standards uh, of safety as a kind of yardstick. On Thursday, there's going to be a very important meeting between the European regulators with, uh, together with NSREC and uh, together with the Commission. For the time being, there are no testing criteria, uh, even though uh, various judgments uh, have been uh, taken about disappointments, about having light uh, weight stre stress tests, but there are no uh, proper stress tests yet uh, and we're going to be taking a look at the criteria on Thursday. The only thing we have is a proposal from an association uh, and the Commission is not part of that association. This is the West uh, European uh, Nuclear Energy Supervisory Body and in April they um, did some research work, came up with uh, did some preparatory work and they're entitled to do so and obviously what will stem from that uh, is uh, up to us. But they've done their work without uh, any um, like kind of participation and cooperation from the uh, uh, Commission. They've 
and they came up with uh, results uh, taking a look at um, uh, some of these things and uh, but uh, the result uh, what's in their proposal doesn't include uh, human error and one or two other aspects and I don't think that's enough so tomorrow evening we're already going to be uh, carrying out some uh, thorough work we want the all the uh, member states all the various uh, nuclear authorities uh, to be to come together because we need um, a thorough analysis regardless of uh, the origins uh, and we have to look at the various uh, uh, threats, uh, excessive heat when it's too cold, uh, earthquakes, those kind of natural disasters and then of course we have to look at uh, human um, uh, criteria as well, human errors, um, uh, human failings, uh, cyber attacks, terrorist attacks or for example uh, a plane uh, crash that would also be one of the things we would have to look at and I think there is a, an interest uh, on the part of uh, European citizens here and the uh, debate that we've had today is very interesting and I'm grateful to you for uh, your support because there's a lot of interest uh, across the political groups in the European Parliament uh, in this kind of uh, analysis and the test criteria that we're going to uh, have to look at and I think you can make a very clear distinction or you could ask yourself the question whether the Fukushima incident was uh, uh, caused by a natural disaster or human error but first of all it was obviously caused by a natural disaster the earthquake and then the tsunami but when it came to actually managing the risk and trying to mitigate and avoid the risk then of course uh, there was a human factor with its strengths and weaknesses and uh, human failings human weaknesses uh, I don't know whether they really have played a role in uh, Japan but once we've had the Thursday meeting I'll be only too happy to report back to you on how we're going to proceed but obviously I'm going to need um, the uh, agreement at European level I already have this from the Commission of course and I'd like the uh, backing from the regulators that's something I, I would like but I need uh, the agreement and go ahead uh, for the uh, tr test criteria which are in the stress tests, I need that from all the regulators and there are a number of uh, experts, expert colleagues in Paris, in London, in Madrid and in Brussels and they have not concluded their uh, thinking about this and uh, obviously then we have to look at uh, what will happen subsequently at the European level and I can be very uh, open I mean, we need a, f a full transparency in the future not like uh, what happened at, at Chernobyl but as I, uh, as I said I can report uh, back to you what's going to happen in thurs uh, on Thursday the results of that meeting and I can also uh, let you know that if there were to be no agreement between the Commission and NSREC the regulators uh, then we would uh, refer the uh, mandate back to the European Council because we don't want a, a, a watered down stress test. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Commissioner. That ends the debate. Thank you all very much indeed. <coughs> we now move on to questions to the Commission. We're starting 40 minutes late. Please note, colleagues. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. Mr. President, on a point of order, I know I'm pushing an open door with you when I raise this, but again, it really is not acceptable that question time be conducted in this way. There's no parliament in the world where question time is not sacrosanct. And I would ask you again to raise this, please, with, with the Bureau. Thank you. It's not the Bureau, it's the Conference of Presidents, but uh, no doubt the um, Svoboda reforms uh, will make proposals about how to deal with this. I agree with you, it's totally unsatisfactory. Um, but I took the chair uh, just at 22, so I'm not really responsible for the delay. We start with <coughs> Mr. Papanikolaou's question 
on the provision of the new draft budget for combating youth unemployment. Mr. Ondor, you have the floor. President, uh, members of the Parliament, uh, as you all know, the EU headline targets under the Europe 2020 strategy include increasing the employment rate to 75 per cent, lifting at least 20 million people out of poverty and social exclusion, reducing the share of early school leavers to under 10 per cent, and ensuring that at least 40 per cent of the younger generation will have completed a tertiary degree by 2020. The Commission helps Member States to achieve these targets through both financial support, in particular the European Social Fund, policy coordination and policy guidance at EU level under the European semester. The 2011 Joint Employment Report, which is based on the Commission's assessment of the Member States' draft national reform programmes, calls on them to improve the functioning of the labour market by introducing more employment-friendly tax systems and by making work pay, by ensuring that wages reflect developments in productivity, by introducing flexible working arrangements to facilitate the further integration of women to the labour market, by ensuring that pension reforms include a more direct link between later retirement and increased pension entitlements, and by removing incentives for people to retire early, by linking unemployment benefits with the business cycle. This means, Mr. President, that safety nets should be reinforced at times when most needed, as we have seen in the past couple of years, while money would be saved in good times. When exactly we enter good times, of course it's a country by country assessment, hopefully in a couple of years' time we all get there. But under the current very difficult circumstances, it is also important that public employment services provide better job search assistance. And we also need to reduce labour market segmentation. Indeed, evidence shows that particular groups, and notably those under 